Three important rules for cultivating a social media presence. Don't put off going online when you know you want to. Being a social media personality is as much about duration as it is about quality of interaction. Accept every friendship request. Like as many products, musicians, artists, and brands as possible. Join every discussion thread and group. You won't drown in data. You'll be struck at first by the volume of communication, but you'll develop personal and emotional filters to help you narrow in on what's key and crucial. First things first, hold your phone in landscape mode. You know why? Because our eyes sit side by side, not one on top of another. That's why TVs and movie screens look like this. Landscape mode is also always going to be easier to crop down into a square, so for God's sake, whether it's a dog in a t-shirt, or a madman at the supermarket, or your drunk grandmother on Christmas Day, or police brutality, before you record anything, 90 degrees. 90 degrees is the difference between some day-tripping Snapchatter and a bona fide content creator. Your social media space is your home on the internet. Make sure to keep it spotless and clean. Regularly update your profile pics, avatars, and icons. Delete comments you don't like. Delete your own tweets and comments if they don't reflect your values at present. Your name is a search term. Your identity is the first 20 hits for you on Google. Facebook profile pictures display at 160 by 160 pixels with a 20 pixel buffer, making that 180 by 180. Cover photos are 815 by 315 with a one pixel margin. Photos uploaded to albums should fit within 2048 by 2048 pixels, and Instagram is half of that, 1024 by 1024. Otherwise, the compression algorithms will make you and your high school sweetheart turned fiance look like two scarecrows in a wood chipper. Yes, I know this doesn't seem like a lot when every phone's resolution is at least 1200 whatever by 2000 whatever these days, and computer screens are displaying in 4K for God's sake, and ideally everyone could pinch and zoom and get a really good look at that boarding pass you're holding up next to your third airport mojito, but that's the best we have for now, and we have to work with what we have. Let's picture a scenario in which you discover that someone's been sharing stories about you online. So what? This stuff hurts you only as much as you allow it to. Don't sweat the small stuff, let it wash over you. But, every so often, just to make it clear that you're not a victim, when someone pushes you, you push them back. Next, practice your face in the mirror. I don't mean practice a face, I mean practice your face. Everyone's is different, which is okay, which is great. Some people look strange with the chin tilted down because of their forehead. Some people look strange with their forehead tilted back because of their chin. Practice makes perfect. Which side is your good side? I find normally it's the side on which your hair parts, because your hairline invites the viewer's eyes across the shape of your face in the optimal direction, like a good classical painting. Don't crop a photo close to a joint or a hairline. Cutting off an image right above the elbow makes it look like your upper arm goes on forever. Keep in mind that on a popular social media website like Facebook or Twitter, that you are at the intersection between a variety of people using the service for very different purposes. You've got people wanting to have serious political discussions alongside people using it just for fun. Parents and work colleagues are there alongside groups of friends sharing in-jokes. It's a public space that awkwardly presses together people from all facets of your life and flattens them out so that everybody is talking at once without the basic etiquette or awkwardness that inhibits a group of strangers at a party. The jarring quality of these conversations is a direct result of the framework of this format. Don't feel obligated to maintain some kind of integrity or stay true to your beliefs. If you can get on and off the internet without losing too many friends and still have a good time, you're ahead of the pack. Looking straight ahead will make you look severe, and not in a good way. Looking to one side will make you look suspicious, and not in a good way. Split the difference. Measure the exact amount of white visible in your eye. What proportion of the eye is your iris? What proportion of your smile is teeth? What proportion of your body is torso? You can figure all this out, and you should, and you shouldn't be ashamed. Vanity is far more palatable when you realize it's just about good math. What's your reputation? You're not a contained creature, you're a part of the landscape. The wind blows through you. You've got so many holes in you, it doesn't really make sense to say the world is outside. Your skin's just a mat of seaweed that the wind blows through. As a personality, you don't even cohere. There's just a part of your brain trying to stitch a coherent narrative out of the decisions you make after you make them. Yep. You're not getting eaten by midges, bro. We are getting eaten by midges. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> you only have to move about 10 feet and you don't get eaten by them. <laughs> but then they find you. They find you eventually. like it on the windy side. Uh.